it's the holiday season and this week the t country is celebrating by talking about Nazis. Welcome to Mama Chats, Mama Chats, part of the Demcast family of podcasts. I'm Donna Schwartz Mills, along with Aliza Worthington and Carol Lee of CrooksandLiars.com. And I, this week. Is there ever a bad time of year to hate Jews? I... Is it ever the wrong time? But during the holidays, it just seems extra fun. Yeah. I, I. Oh. I, I have no words for how uh, re really repugnant it is what's words. happening right now. I'm good. I'm glad you do because I don't even <laughs> know what to say other than that it's just like, I don't know. Kanye West needs to be, have a conservator and be silent for the next 13 years. Just like Britney. Yeah, yeah except Britney didn't need a conservator. But, you know, exactly. But that's my point. Not yeah. make him an anti Semite. Nothing yeah. is going to make him an anti Semite. Bipolar he just, disorder, he just is. Yeah. But, but what bothers me is that he has a mic right now, and that's what I'd like to shut down. Right. He needs, he needs to be silenced in addition to getting treatment because yeah. his platform is dangerous. What he's doing is dangerous. Um, uh, he, yeah. So, I mean, the two things so, are, happen to coexist in the same in the same person. In his case, yeah, um, right. Doesn't you know? But that that's not the case for everybody else who's grabbing onto it and running with it. Well, so yeah. I mean, saying, that's yeah, and and accepting it and platforming him and just cutting out the bad bits, you know, uh, Fox News and whoever else, right? Yeah, I, I just. I mean, it, I mean, it it did not help it. for Trump to have Thanksgiving with Ye and Nick Quint and Nick Fuentes, right? Right. And then deny it for I like Peter, you know, except four times instead of three, right? <laughs> I, I didn't know him. him. I didn't know who he was. He was just an extra person that came along, as if the Secret I Service. Like me. So he must be cool. Like he does with everything. Well, that and and honestly, that's probably how he thinks. But the yes. the whole entire I don't know him stuff is just crap. I mean, it's it's, oh, it's total bullshit. And I don't think anybody actually bought it, including like people that support him. <laughs> like, why bother with it? No, because... because honesty isn't a requirement as far as the, his supporters are concerned. Uh, right. You know, intellectual honesty is not a requirement. Um. Ethics are not a requirement. Not being hypocritical is not a requirement. That's all fine. Marjorie Taylor Greene tried the same thing because, you know, yeah, she said, oh, like, oh, I don't, support I don't know anything about this guy. And yeah, then there's like, footage of her at his event. Right. Yeah, we reported on it back when she went to his event. Yeah. Right. Because it was so repugnant back then, too. Yeah. So so cool. basically what Elon Musk has done, and, and he does... I mean, one of the things that's really weird about what he's doing on Twitter right now is his pretend Christian act. You know, it's just really awful. And so, you know, and so he's pretending to be a Christian, loving everybody, even the people that are Nazis. I mean, that doesn't work. That doesn't work that way. Huh? Yeah. Is that his justification for letting them be on the platform? Because that they're all lovable. Free speech, because... man. Free speech and no, but it, I didn't realize. Yeah, it's free speech is his this element to it that he himself has such a big open Christian heart that even he he can find it in his heart to love these these flawed people. He was talking right. about turning the other cheek, right? And mm -hmm. and today he tweeted out something about um, how um, he's going to amplify love speech instead of hate. <laughs> As, as he puts the the grope wait who who did he put, oh the 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 creator of the daily storm back on twitter right right, right. right. In the i mean he's putting absolute nazis back on twitter replatforming them handing him a mic and letting him speak while he's I mean, talking he about love speech the daily storm guy he he was cut off twitter 10 years ago yeah well he's been in hiding because he owes millions of dollars right so, you know, this is like replatforming him with no accountability for anything. 
Yeah, because love. It's it's gross. It's just absolutely. And there's the whole algorithm things too, where, you know, for mm -hmm. whatever reason, we're all seeing more right wingers who we don't want to see, fewer of our friends. And then it mm -hmm. turns out that there was some script they ran that mass unsubscribed people from left wing voices. Is right. that right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had to I had to resubscribe to the Auschwitz Museum today because wow. now I wasn't seeing them and people I saw people saying, gosh, I haven't seen them and I found out I was not subscribed. And sure enough, I was not subscribed anymore. Wait, now and there are people who said that even after they resubscribed, they were unsubscribed again and had to resubscribe a second time. <sighs> Wait, I'm checking now because I'm curious. Checking. <laughs> I am. I'm checking. Well, I mean, I, I actually engaged on one of his tweets because the most siderism was so disgusting. I just couldn't help myself. I mean, it was basically when, you know, left wing and right wing extremists are both mad at me and 80% in the middle are, 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 you know, aren't. I must be doing something right. I'm like, show me one left wing extremist who has millions of followers, is an outright Nazi. <laughs> and, and a former hip hop, you know, star or a hip hop star, basically, is a, that's the gist of what I said. I, I said you won't find one because there aren't any. So yeah, the both siderism is just the Auschwitz Museum. You are still good. I am oh. still following the Auschwitz Museum. Yes, it's, that has not been. It is a lot like when on CNN they talk about going for the center. And ignoring the fact that the goalposts for the center have moved when the right has gone so far to the right, you know, that the center is is not what's really the center anymore. We call that an Overton window, kids. Yes. yes. Right. Well, according to, you know, our Daily Stormer guy, the Overton window is shattered now because he's back on Twitter. So whatever. I mean, it's just the platforming hate in the name of free speech or you know love or whatever i don't know it's just wrong it's wrong it's morally what? wrong and it, go, go ahead well no, i was no, just no. going to say i mean the instinct is for everybody to leave twitter right to go to mastodon and to go to post which we'll we can talk about those later i think there's some good reasons to be uh on those platforms but honestly twitter is still where things happen and until that doesn't happen anymore until you you get to have another place where things happen you, you have to keep your feet in both places there's just all no way the, around that we're in all the yeah. places so all we're going to talk about that later um right let's uh get into uh into the meat of what is going on. I should have gotten out my little wheel, you know, to choose a topic today. <laughs> yes. A lot of topics to go with. Yeah, um, you know, I, I need, to, I wanna get that made for us one day. I'm writing it down. I, I probably wrote it down at some point. But you don't the think the life, the game of life wheel is good enough? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come, so it works what, as, really well. <laughs> We're we're more high class than that. Come on. I'm not. Oh. Oh no. no, no I don't know. No, no, no. That was my favorite that's, that's... game growing up. So yeah. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. But yeah, we, I, we gotta get something better. Before we move on, I, there's just one last thing I'd like to add about what's happening right now because it's not it's Nazis, but it's also um, anti LGBT and anti women. I mean, all of these things are being thrown at us and replatformed and and they all come together in the person of Randy Weingarten, right? Who is all three things. <laughs> really? Right? Who was and Cruz who said she was the most dangerous person? Who said no, that? No, it was Mike Pompeo, the former oh, head of the Mike CIA. Pompeo. And the former uh, yeah. Secretary of State. Right. Unbelievable. Right, who said that about her? And I mean, he, he is intentionally aiming weapons and i mean that in her it's direction in her and yeah. woe unto him if anything happens to her i mean she's had you know she does nothing but good but she has to travel with like security and stuff now it's crazy 
But so that, I just want to shout out to Randy. Yes, thank you. All Randy. of our educators. Yeah. You know, the yeah. boards of education throughout the country, little tiny boards of education that have been taken over by mm -hmm. these moms for liberty types. Um who yeah. just want to have a say in the curriculum. You know, I mean, yeah. that like right. I don't want to have a say in the surgeon's curriculum who's going to perform open heart surgery on me. I'm going to be like, "Go, do your thing. You studied it for years. I I'm not going to say don't use that kind of scalpel or that kind of thread." You know? Right. Do your thing, you know, but no, with teachers, it's always people think they know better than than the professionals who have been doing the job for for all these years. Teachers are heroes. You know? Yeah. Yes, they are. Our, our teachers are heroes as are nurses. And but but again, people aren't like telling yeah. it, it it's different with teachers. People value the, the people have have such little respect for the job teachers do that they really, really think that they who have zero education, zero experience, have never set foot in front of a classroom to try to communicate or educate a group of eight-year-olds or a group of heaven forfend 12-year-olds, um, <laughs> you know, right. that, that think they are in a position to say, well, because it's my child, I have a right to decide what materials you're going to use to teach them. No, no, you fucking don't. You don't know shit. <laughs> How do you no, really feel about that, Aliza? <laughs> sorry, my family's generations back, lousy with teachers. You know I, what? I, we I, already I, have school choice, right? Yeah. So yeah. if you yeah, don't, you don't like, like it, the send your kids to a fucking private school. Go to a parochial school. Right. But I send my the teachers don't have to have a master's school. degree and the teachers don't have to, you know, and they pay them less and they, you know, yeah, fine. Do that. You know, whatever. Anyway, sorry. Move on. No, 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 no. <laughs> As moms, I feel like it's important for us to stick up for the teachers. Amen taught yep. our kids so well. I loved 99% of my child's teachers. They were Me fantastic. Too. All my kids. I loved them. Yeah. There was there's always one. There's always that, one. You know, but there was always oh, one. Always but, just, but you know, even then we were able to come around that, you know? Yeah. yeah right. Exactly. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, no, well, I mean, we had some problematic ones. I'm not going to lie about that. But at the same time, like, it. I mean, we coped with it. Yeah. You know, and, and there were times I wish I'd fought harder. And there were times I had to really advocate for my kid. Me too. I'm not going to lie about that either. You know, because teachers, you know, are human. And sometimes you get bad ones. That's true, too. Yeah. But but what what I'm talking about and what we're talking about is when, you know, these people who have zero, you know, zero real knowledge about pedagogy and and subject matter and how how to control classrooms think that, you know, because they've been whipped up into a, a, a hate, you know, a hate frenzy, you know, yeah. and they and they have, you know, um, you know, whatever they, they have, you know, raging, raging bigot boners for, you know, to get, <laughs> to get, you know, make sure their kids aren't taught that it's okay to have two moms. You know, the, those people don't get to tell teachers how to teach. I agree. Amen. But you do have to look at the big picture. And the big picture mm -hmm. is that there are forces on the right who do not want to have an educated public. It benefits them not to. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so they don't believe in public education. They don't want to pay for public education. They don't want to have a secretary of education on the cabinet. They don't want to pay for private education either, though. They no, want us right. to pay for private education. Yeah, it's not that they don't want to pay for public education. It's that they want their 
kids' private education to be paid for by the state. And that's that's just not right. And, uh, you know, I just have to say, I was one of those parents once. I, I sent my kid, my first kid, to private school for elementary school. And I'm like, wah, 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 why do I have to pay for this and that? When I sent him to public school, I realized the error wasn't that they didn't pay for it. The error was me sending him to private school. That yeah. that was what I shouldn't have done. But you see, so. the media at that time and at every time is saying, why can't Johnny read? And, you know, all you, I know that as an LAUSD mom, a mom coming into a very difficult school district, I was terrified for my child mm -hmm. because it was going to be dangerous. She wasn't going to get a good education. Oh, you know, that, that that's why what I, I saw in the media. And then right. when I got there, it was wonderful. You know, it had problems. There were always budgetary issues, but the majority of the teachers were wonderful and loving. Even the, the difficult bureaucracy of LAUSD, I, you know, it was difficult to work with them, but I never saw LAUSD officials not care about the students. They were putting students first all the time. It was just big and unwieldy. And I don't know what the answer is. And the reason it's it's big and unwieldy and the reason that there are, you hear about the difficulties in public schools is that public schools by law must accommodate everyone, everybody. No matter what, right. Right. Their, no matter their issues. And it's their and, virtue and it's also what makes it difficult. And yep. they're constantly, you know, the budgetary issues are, if you want us to, you want us to accommodate everyone, but you don't want to give us the means with which to accommodate them. And that mm -hmm. is, you know, yep. the perpetual difficulty. Yeah. Um, I will tell you that, you know, in Los Angeles, where there are some 70 different languages spoken by the children, you know, in the whole district. At the time that my daughter went to school, there were 800,000 kids in the school district. Wow. Now it's down to 500,000. It's shrunk to just half a million. Oh, um, is that all? <laughs> that's all. It's still the second largest school district in the country. Yeah. And we had a mandate that in every classroom, wherever there was a child who was an English language learner, there had to be someone who spoke the language. But this okay. is an unfunded mandate. Great. And the, you know, they also had to hire someone to coordinate the English learners, also mm -hmm. unfunded, largely unfunded. Our principal hired me to be the English learning coordinator on a part-time basis and she got me in on a clerical level because she i wasn't qualified you know <laughs> may i interrupt to ask if this is uh was this an elementary level yes or was this, this is elementary uh -huh. this is elementary school but you know i was supposed to give all of the English learners a test at the beginning of the school year, which I was by law, I could not administer myself. Mm -hmm. So we would bring in a substitute teacher who was retired to yeah. supervise me giving yeah. these tests to these kids. Yeah. And, you know, I was only allowed to work a certain number of hours. So I, I would bank my hours because the stuff had a deadline had to be done in an impossible amount of time. <laughs> and this is the kind of creative thinking that principals have to do when they are dealing with laws and regulations and budgets and unfunded mandates. And seven-year-olds with big eyes who are coming to them and wanting to learn and needing yeah. to eat. And, you know, yeah. and, and, they, and they care about them. And I remember this one little boy. I... I he was, I don't remember which country he was from. He was from an Asian country. And this, this little guy, he was so advanced in math compared to the other kids in his class, but he's being held back because mm -hmm. of the English language learning. And once they're in the system, it's hard for the kids to get out of the system. Yeah. 
and these are the kind of challenges. And um, gosh, we went off on a tangent. I wasn't planning to go on. <laughs> you know, I mean, for this stuff, you know, we talk so much about politics and we talk so, you know, we, uh, this, this is at the heart of, uh, you know, th this is part of why it, it's important, I think, to to highlight some of these things for people who think that the educational system is so simple and that it's so easy for, for people to come in and criticize, you know, and, and why it's important to run for your local school boards and why it's important to be protective and, and respectful of teachers when they say that they need things, it, it's, you know, and when they say they know what they're talking about, most of the time they do. And, you know, the school in a, in a nation where there aren't a lot of, of ties binding people together, the school becomes yeah. one of the centers of the community. Mm -hmm. And why, at least here in Los Angeles, you know, that's where they have put in, you know, every school has a parent center for parent education and parent parental concerns. And um, every school now has like, you know, for the COVID reaching out, the school was the center for that. In some of the higher level schools, that's where kids are getting their birth control information yeah. and, you know, disseminated. And that's one of the things that people object to when it's just so absolutely necessary you know, oh. <laughs> I was uh, wearing my pro sex ed shirt yesterday as I went to uh, the doctor who is uh, with a Catholic practice, you know, a St. Agnes, you know, and <laughs> just to be pissy because I don't like being having a doctor with that, you know, with a, but they, they're everywhere. Like it's impossible to live where I live and not have, you know, the Catholic healthcare system all over yeah. the place in Baltimore. It's just impossible. You don't have a Cedar sinai over there like we do. Well, I do, <laughs> but it's 45 minutes away, you no. know, or it's not worth it. You know, I don't live in the Jewish part of town. So maybe I should. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's funny, my mom, growing up, my mom's gynecologist was Catholic and his office was near a convent and the waiting room was always full of nuns. And the nuns were always very nice to me as a young child, just sitting in the waiting room while my mom was having her exam. So, oh my goodness gracious. Even okay. nuns, you have to get a pap smear, you guys. Yes, sometimes nuns get, you know, ovarian cancer or whatever, you know, like they need... Yeah. So another Whatever. aside, another tangent. Um, <laughs> I can tell that this is going to be one where it, everything just kind of gets away from us. So let's. Yeah. I'm kind of in, I'm like, I'm on a very, I don't know. <laughs> let's go into some of the meat of it, at least get something off the rundown that Carol said we have to talk about. <laughs> and yeah, that's right. That would be the Georgia runoff. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Voting has been early voting was off the charts. They broke records. Um, polling right now shows Warnock four points ahead of Walker, but that's still within the margin of error. Right. And yesterday, Barack Obama was campaigning for Warnock and gave Herschel Walker the White House Correspondents Dinner Trump treatment. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that's the perfect description of it. I'm telling I had the, the same shade. Thought. The shade was glorious. He oh is, my gosh. Five minutes of it. Goat. He is just nobody beats him. There's nobody like him with the comic timing and the snark and the shade. He is just but and and he's I mean he's relaxed now right he's not I I remember it just used to drive me crazy that when he campaigned in 2008 no matter what he was doing if he was bowling whatever he always had a white button down shirt on and a tie and yeah. now he's like in his his black cool shirt oh, with the you know it's yeah. open and yeah <laughs> it's like he's it's right he's done with all that white button down shirt stuff so. 
uh, he was just magnificent. We're going to run that clip tonight at eight o'clock. You guys, if you, oh, good, yeah. if you can visit the crooksandliars.com, it'll be on the front page. Um, because it's just so delicious. Eastern. Yeah. Wait, right? No, so 11 Eastern. 11, it's, it, 11 yeah. Eastern. I'm so bad. So, yeah. But yeah, uh, it'll be overnight. I mean, you can you get it in the morning too, but it, it, it's just such, such glorious uh, everything. It's, <laughs> so here's what I want to know. Are any black people voting for him or is it for voting for Walker? Herschel Walker? There's I, I would love to know the breakdown once it's over. I mean, my my theory, my working theory is basically the the vast majority of people that are going to vote for Herschel Walker are white Republicans. Yeah. Oh, totally. Absolutely. But there will be some black Republicans voting for Walker. There, um, maybe. I I don't think many. I don't think many voted for him in the first round. Right. I mean, I think that that libertarian guy was in there to be kind of a spoiler, you know, for people. Right. If you didn't want to vote for a black guy, here's a white guy you can vote for. Right. Right. And, you know, so uh, it'll be interesting to see what the breakdown is. But uh, I there's some interesting interviews coming out of the early voting. There was one that the <laughs> lieutenant governor yes. of Georgia got in the booth and couldn't vote for either one of them. So he couldn't okay, vote whatever. for Walker. Whatever. And, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm down with that. If Republicans want to just choose not to vote and stay home, that's okay too. Well, I I'm okay saw with that an interview yesterday, white Republican voter in Georgia who said on camera, he says, I think that Reverend Warnock, you know, Senator Warnock's a great man. He's a mm -hmm. good Senator. I think Walker's going to lose. I voted for Walker. And they can't say that tribalism is a problem on both sides. I mean, <sighs> what? <laughs> I, I heard that interview too. I, I, I could hardly believe my ears. It was like, <laughs> wait, excuse me, he, you did what? Did you ask him why? No. I don't think so. I, See, I think he just- drives me insane. That there would be no pushback from the reporter. And maybe this is why I would never be able to hold a job as a reporter. Because my question would be, what how were you can thinking? you rationalize that? <laughs> I know. How does yeah. that how does that comport with your, with, with your sense of ethics? Although I think the sense? unspoken truth is that he did it because Walker's a Republican. Yeah. I mean, okay. he's like, yeah, I think this guy's fine, but he's a Democrat. I can't vote for him. So right. I'm voting for, for Walker because he's a Republican. I mean, and, and I would challenge that. And I would say you would rather have an incompetent, completely delusional, infantile Republican than a brilliant, uh, you know, who, who I would repeat his words back to him. No. Yeah. Democrat. I, I, I would make that person squirm about that decision. He, again, well, that's the, the, honestly, though, yeah. that's not a reporter. I, 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 I would do that, too. But I, that's why I'm not a reporter. Yeah, that's yeah, it, I, I mean, um, because that's not their job, really. But and and I think that in this case, that guy's uh, reasoning spoke for itself. I mean, it's just you know, I think Reverend Senator Warnock's a good guy. He's really ethical. You know, I mean, he was really complimentary about Warnock, and then yeah. and, and 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 said, you know, yes, you know, Walker's Republican. I think he's going to lose. I don't think he was. He he didn't really say anything bad about Walker. He just you know said he thought he was going to lose. And I voted for him. And it's like the unspoken answer to that is because he's a Republican. I mean, those are the words that were left off of the answer. Yeah. But that's what it is. Yeah. I mean, and that's that's it's what we have to factor in when we every election, right? Because that's what happened in to, in Hillary in t 2016 with between Hillary and uh, Trump is that they voted for Trump. They held their nose and voted for Trump because they're Republicans. Because they live in a bubble and what has been created has been this mass identification thing where it's us against them and I cannot give them any power. Right. And and that's Fox News did that. Right? 
I mean, that it, the running Herschel Walker was the most cynical act, the single most cynical act the Republican Party has indulged in since Donald Trump. And I mean, it was, a lot. <laughs> it, it was, I mean, they just said, oh, here, we've got a qualified black guy over here. We just need any black guy over here. Well, oh, Herschel Walker is popular in Georgia. We'll just run him. I mean, they've been doing that with women in all the states, too. Oh, yeah. Well, that's been yeah, going on absolutely. A long, a long time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there just aren't a lot of blacks in the Senate, right? Just one right. and Scott. Right. So, I, and that's more than we've had and less and fewer than there should be, right? I mean, right. representationally, there's blacks are still underrepresented all the way through Congress, but especially in the Senate. Yes. And, so... And and since Kamala Harris became vice president, there right. are no black women in the Senate now. Right. But we do have one on the Supreme Court. So we there's do. that. That is, that is <laughs> yeah. a good thing. So Who, by the um, way, has if we want to keep talking politics, has agreed to hear Joe Biden's uh, student okay. debt um, case in February, yeah. which is apparently a fast track. So that it's a real fast a track. Fast track. Yeah. yeah, that is a good thing. Yeah, yeah, that is a good thing. So we can talk about good things or we can talk about chaos on the Republican side of the house. <laughs> I, I just um, want to throw that in. That's, I don't care where we go. <laughs> now, now, we did have the votes with the changing of the guard and Hakeem Jeffries will be the first thing. black speaker of the house. Yeah. Well, he won't be the Speaker of the House. He'll be the minor the, minority he'll leader. Be the minority, right. I know, in our dreams, he'll, right. be the, he'll be the only leader in the House who has any control over his caucus. Right. So, yeah. um, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, we've got Catherine Clark, who will be the whip. Right. And Pete Aguilar, mm -hmm. who is also in the leadership. And Jim Clyburn is staying on. He is mm -hmm. staying on. What happened with Cicilline? Why did why did he withdraw? They had a they had a meeting, and Cicilline withdrew. And I think the 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 party line is that there will be some um, institutional knowledge by keeping oh, Clyburn okay. to stay yeah. to have him stay on like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, that's not, that's not I mean, wrong. I think the, you have to also factor in the fact that. Um, I mean, Clyburn as the whip has been extraordinarily effective. It wasn't just Nancy Pelosi counting votes. It was Cly right. Clyburn whipping them. Okay, so uh, there's that. And also um, Clyburn has a lot of power, especially since it was South Carolina yes. that saved Biden's candidacy. He has a good relationship with the White House and that's important. Right. Yeah, and I can see him being um, a really great mentor for Hakeem Jeffries. Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. Jeffries. You know, so, and Nancy Pelosi is now Speaker her. Emerita. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. can't wait to see her getting down and dirty fighting with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Which Actually, I really, I'm really, i really going to love her being on committees. Yes. Like, She's you know, I, I know it, it like all the things that we haven't gotten to see her do because she's been speaker and now she can do so. Unless we have be... a dancer from committees. Right. Uh, that is, that is, <laughs> he's he's going to have her impeached. That is if Kevin is the speaker because right. there's a mystery candidate. Oh, there is? I haven't heard what about that. hear about that? Oh, I heard about the, the Gozar, whoever is spouting off something it wasn't about Gozar, it was another one, but yeah. Oh, no, it was, what's his name? I, uh, yeah. Biggs, Biggs. Yeah. And he might not even be in Congress, yeah. Right. So, right. so that's the old, we're, we're going to nominate Trump. Donald Trump. Are they going to bring Trump? The Speaker of the House. Or are they going to bring Gingrich back? Or oh, Boehner? God. Fuck's sake! Don't no, they're care. not Boehner. I mean, Boehner was a rhino. He's the other day. Yeah, Boehner's not doesn't ride with them. Boehner was yeah. there the other day. <laughs> Boehner what? Boehner went to visit them the other day. He was all, he was yeah. at the house. Oh, I'm sure, but but honestly, that that <laughs> as he Obama all over any of them, but <laughs> as as Obama referred to them as the rump of the Republican caucus, those Freedom Caucus people don't want anybody. They don't want anybody. They, they, you know, they, 
I don't know what they want, but they're they're just fucking nuts. Yeah, and they really every single one of them has no business being in Congress. So here's, here's another conspiracy type of thing. Oh, I think I did the f word first. Go ahead. No, I did. I did. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. So you know how at Thanksgiving, right after they returned, oh look at the kitty. <laughs> Thanksgiving, when they returned the Biden family's cars, Secret Service returned the cars, they rented on Nantucket, and then you had five cars on fire. The Biden family didn't ride in those. Those were the Secret Service cars. I I found that out. So, um, but it's still weird. And I mean, like, so, so some of the explanations that have come at me have been, well, you know, all it took is one, if they were all parked together, all one car had to do was catch fire and then the rest of them to good too. I suppose that's true. I just think it's very weird. It is very, very. And it, weird. it's worth investigating it. It's worth it's, investigating, especially after what happened to Kamala Harris a few months ago. Right. Yes. And, you know, the conspiracy theory that, you know, gave me chills was when you've got a Republican as Speaker of the House and second in line. What if something happens to both the president and the vice president? Second in line. You're right. You're right. Second in line. Yep. Yeah. yeah I know. Especially I know. if we're not going to have it, we're going to have a non-speaker of the house. I mean, <laughs> Biden had never really fully cleaned house with the secret service either. No. You know, so, or the FBI, frankly, I mean, Christopher yeah. Ray is still there. Um, no. Have you heard of the suggestion that Demings that he nominate Demings for yeah. that and fire Ray? Yeah, I, I have heard that. I wouldn't hate that idea. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, I wouldn't hate it either. I just not, not sure that happen. that's like the end of her career as a politician is all. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I like Demings where she. I, I love her. Her she's she's brilliant as as a mm-hmm. as a rep as as a as a. Is well, she she's did? done. She lost. No, she she's done. I know, but like it's you know, I, I just feel like she belongs in politics and I, I mean agree. she would be an amazing FBI person. She she really would be. She's that's I mean I I I, I like want to see her a role for her summer. Wants, yeah, she I mean that was an interesting idea. It was it was and it would be if so if Biden was reelected, I could see that being something that he could do in a second term. I'm not right. sure it makes sense in the first term. But I, I could see where he could do it in the second term. Yeah. So. I can't see him doing it in the midterms. Yeah, it would. He would be accused of politicizing the FBI. Exactly. He does. He's accused of politicizing. I things. know. I know. It, the, it, and but that's it, only on the one of, side. And on our secrets. side, it's that he did. Right. He is too neutral that he doesn't, you know, get partisan enough for us. Right. right. So but, but the secret service is not a political organization either. You know, the secret service is, but I'm sorry, you forgot political. a word. It's not that it's not supposed to be a political to be organization. Political. Yes. I, I stand corrected. But um, by the end of Trump's term, they were wearing MAGA hats. You yeah. know? Right. But what I'm saying is that they don't really conduct investigations. They provide protection. So, um, like my my point is that removing Ray from the FBI, like those are political appointments, and I could almost understand why, in the middle of his term, they people would say, or why he would be hesitant to do it for fear of being accused of being political. But cleaning house with the Secret Service—that's not a political thing. No, I agree. Because they're, they're they have to put in a new nothing political in the secret service and it there clearly is as as carolee pointed out and i think that that whole place needs to be purged well he he does have the person he's put in charge is his person now so i'm I'm sure that she's working on clearing out you know cleaning it out you have to you have to work inside of the structure so like everything with doj we are not privy to yeah. what's going on as far as investigations. I just got right. so nervous. I mean, just with, with the cars. Yeah. yeah. That Plus, was I just watched The Crown story. and I saw the, you know, the thing where Diana was like afraid that people were messing with her cars. You know, like now I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I haven't gotten to that part yet, but sorry. No, well, yeah. I was, listen, I was working on CN in CNN com community the night she died. Oh, we, we just launched it three months earlier and we, it was the platform hit was not fully stable. Oh my God. And the night she died, we, we were up basically for 24 hours for like oh. three days. The, those of us that were doing that and just trying to keep the platform stable and things moderated and everything. It was wild. Huh? That is definitely trial by fire. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean that it's like that, that platform at the time was the equivalent of young Twitter. Right. I mean, everybody was coming there from all these different countries. CNN was one of the biggest websites that on the, the new web. Right. And because this was 1997, in, 97, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Boy. And it was insane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we, we digressed again. <laughs> you know, that, that's a good, but, but no, it relates. Yeah. It relates. It relates. Yeah. Um, okay. So we, we talked about Princess Diana. Well, William, we were talking about conspiracy uh, theories and weird. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. mean, William and Kate are in the country. President Biden. Greeted them, them today. today. He had a state dinner last night. Oh, yeah, it was so cool. And mm. it was, you know, and I, I saw people complaining, of course, you know, on Twitter. Ray, 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 ray. No, this was normal. This is diplomacy. This is also the job of Why the White House. Oh, because, you know, it's all the star-studded gala and everything, yeah. and, you know, hobnobbing with the the hoi polloi or whatever, but the, this is job. just because Trump was too awful. was terrible at it. No yeah. one wanted to do it with Trump. Yeah. So it, no it, this was the ever. first state dinner, just a point of trivia that has ever been held at the white house during the holidays. So, the, so they had the, the white house all decorated out for the holidays. And so they had the state dinner on the South lawn in a mm -hmm. tent because yes. Because the hall, you know, all the halls were decked, <laughs> as it were. So, so yeah, it I mean, might have been good for COVID too to have it in a tent. It's probably right. there, yeah. That too, and and they had um, they had lobster, and I mean, the menu just looked amazing, just amazing, and it was all like they had, you know, cheeses from different from one from California, one from Wisconsin, you know, it, it was. It was just a very lovely menu, and I really love steak You're dinners. I like all the pomp and circumstance, and the, the I mean, can can we ever forget, you know, Michelle Obama and how beautiful she always looked at those steak dinners? Oh my heart! I mean, she like she and and Barack were just amazing oh, were representatives for our country. Incredible. In their daughters, that last state dinner that they had where the daughters were all grown up and in their evening gowns, they were like, oh, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> what I loved were the, the, the speeches, the press conference, you know, yesterday mm -hmm. before the dinner. Right. Where both President Biden and President Macron talked about how France is our oldest ally. Mm-hmm. And, you know, reminded Americans of that history and how, you know, over over two centuries, we've worked together, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, in four short years, Trump did everything he could to destroy that. Destroy that relationship. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. So it's nice to see it being rebuilt. Yes, it was nice. Yeah. Didn't you love Jill's gown? Oh, it was beautiful. Yeah. yeah. See, I mean, that's the other thing I like. I like seeing all the, the pretty dresses and all that stuff, you know, and all the pictures. It's just like, a, you know, it's fun. Yeah. Big so, fun. So speaking of state dinners, um, this isn't exactly the same thing, but can we talk about how amazing, um, I know I'm going to say her name wrong, but the prime minister of Australia, or is it New Zealand? New like, Zealand. Oh, yeah, Cinda rated the reporter for asking, uh, you know, if they're having if, if she's having dinner with the prime minister of Finland later, who happens to also be a woman, just because they have, you know, a lot of women. Women. yeah, you know, they're two women, they have a lot in common. <laughs> they can talk about girl stuff. 
Yeah. Yeah. Him Bill Biden's alone at the dinner, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They're just going to, they're going to talk fashion. And fashion. Shit. <laughs> she ripped him a new one. Oh my goodness. It was glorious. And, you know, I mean, again, like the, 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 the distinction that reporters impose on 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 women, the 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 way they treat women. Um, well, don't you know that white male is the default? Right, it is. Of course, it is. Her first response, her 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 immediate response was, "Would you have asked Barack Obama that question?" You know, and, and only if he was meeting with an African leader. Right. <laughs> you dudes have a lot. You you bros have a lot in common. <laughs> I mean, they asked him questions about like that. They you do. Know, I mean, like, unbelievable. It was unbelievable. Um, it, shameful, yes. honestly. It is exactly shameful. Right. Sorry. That's okay. So, all right. I really am all over the place today. I'm you sorry. are all over the place. <laughs> we are. So, you we guys, we have really. a choice. You've got about 15 minutes, 14 minutes left. We can talk about the great mastodon migration in that 14 minutes or we can shift it to next week and talk about um trump losing again in court um, <laughs> big time uh, Bigly. Arizona, arizona being you know the, the, that county in arizona cochise county being forced to certify forced the election um I mean, there's a lot I, I told you there's a lot on the list this week there and is a lot on the list i i, I think we should hold the mastodon talk for next week and yeah, um, that'll be well next week okay yeah i think yeah yeah okay. so so the arizona thing is yeah i mean so this, this, this is the the <laughs> totally waxed part of this Arizona thing. So Cochise County wanted to do a full hand count of their ballots and they were at, and this is before even the election was held, they were getting mail-in ballots and they wanted to open them up and hand count them and they couldn't even agree on like the first 13 ballots. It was ridiculous. <laughs> and and you know, so Mark Elias is in court like suing no 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 because he's thinking, you know, he they could actually like tilt the election by letting, you know, kind of leaking what they'd seen so far in the ballots and, and everything. Okay, so midterms come and go. Their county is su super red. They they count the ballots with the machines and the, the county goes red and the the um, the representative that for the or the person running for the house in, in that county and I, I think surrounding ones too uh, wins, but only with that county. Right. I mean, in a, if you took that county out of the mix, the Democrat wins. So here they are refusing to certify their vote. <laughs> right. And by not doing that, it would have actually technically yes. made the Democrat win. Democrat in the House. <laughs> but Mark Elias, being the good man that he is, was suing them to force them to certify the vote, which would mean that the Republican would go to the House. And in fact, what I was told was that because Kevin McCarthy is in charge of the House, they would have seated the Republican anyway. They they would have just, uh, you know, overridden it and seated oh, wow. him. So, yeah. So um, anyway, but but the but stupid part of this is certification. Huh? You know, it was holding up the state certification that had to be done right. by law, by yeah. by the date. Right. And so you know, you have the the governor, the secretary of state, the lieutenant governor, all you know, contingent on this. And um, they're like, refusing to certify. So yeah, finally, Katie Hobbs was suing, wasn't she? He, yeah, the, well, they, Katie Hobbs sued. Um, they went to court, the judge ordered them to sue to certify by 3.30 p.m. yesterday or something. And so the one Democrat, there's three, I guess there's two Republicans and one Democrat on the board. One Republican didn't show up one Republican did and the Democrat did and they certified it. Right. Two out of three. <clears throat> yeah. So it is certified, but also wasn't Carrie Lake ordered to, to pay attorney's fees? <laughs> yeah. Not, ju not just Carrie Lake. Also Mark Fincham. Mark Fincham. Nice. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. 
So, <laughs> and, and the judge was scathing in that. It was like, you, you know, did everything but say, you guys filed bogus, uh, yes. bo bogus lawsuits that were bullshit, and now you're going to pay for that. Yep. It was it was great. And speaking of scathing opinions, the eleventh <laughs> the eleventh circuit came back yesterday and tossed out Trump's special master. And I was hoping this was going to be next. <laughs> I was going to bring it up if you didn't. <laughs> logged Eileen yes. Cannon yes. for like making up the rules as she went. They said we can't have rules that are you know only for this guy because he's the former president. That's not how this works. And. Uh, and yeah, don't forget so. the Eleventh Circuit panel. All Republicans, All Republicans, conservative Republicans, appointed by Republicans. Well, two remember? of them were appointed by Trump. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, it, it was it was definitely a smackdown and, and hard. A lot of catch up on that. yesterday. I'm not, I'm oh, I'm sure. And in fact, I I keep asking. You know, has anybody? Has he posted anything on Truth Social? And I keep getting told that probably somebody's got his phone. Because... <laughs> I don't know where it is, sir. Yeah. So you imagine. So now the FBI has access uh, once again to everything they took with their legal warrant, you know, from Mar-a-Lago. Right. It wasn't a raid, Donna. It wasn't a raid. <laughs> It was not a raid, and the judge made a big FD I out of that. Know. I mean, it was like, don't call this a raid. It was That's a warrant right. legally right. served. Yep. Right. right. And so the investigation can oh, resume. Oh, and the House has his taxes, too. That's the other fun thing that happened for Trump this week. He had a good week. Yeah. The House right. has taxes. Yeah. Right. And, Six years. And Patsy Baloney testified today before a grand jury because it was ruled again that you know he said that he couldn't answer questions because of executive privilege and the judge said nah. uh, there's none of that <laughs> there's none of that you don't have any executive privilege you've got to go testify now yeah so that was uh, right. that was awesome as well and then uh, just to add a little icing on the cake Today was the closing arguments for the, the New York Trump org trial yes. where the basically the Trump organization is trying to argue that that it was all just for Weisselberg's benefit, right? The company didn't benefit from it at all. Now, anybody who's ever had anything to do with payroll knows that's bullshit because but when they did what they did, they got out from under the 7.2% payroll tax. Right. That it was subject to. And Weisselberg is falling on his sword. He is still being paid $650,000 a year mm -hmm. by the Trump organization, even though he's ostensibly left the organization. And he told them in court he was expecting his usual half million dollar bonus at Christmas. Oh, that's nice. Must be nice. <laughs> I want one of those. Yeah. Just give so, me one. Yeah. yeah. I only need one. Just one bonus. Yeah. But this is all Weisselberg, you know? This has nothing to do with the Trump organization. Right. Yeah. Sure thing. Didn't benefit so, him at all. And and I guess like to to boot, at least from what I read from the people that are observing this trial, the Trump lawyers are really obnoxious and they're like uh, uh, interrupting the prosecutor. In there, I mean, one of the things that you learn just if you've ever watched court TV is the one thing you'd never do is interrupt opening or closing arguments. You, those are like sacrosanct. And I guess the Trump lawyer is interrupting like every five minutes, and the judge finally like lost patience and said, "You're not doing this anymore. Stop it." <laughs> so. Yeah, one of the said the judge literally threw their th threw their hands up, like you know, right. done. The judge is just done with them. Is He's over it that Trump's lawyers are assholes? Not even a bit. <laughs> he, can, he can't get any, he can't get anyone good. Yeah. There I will say people who are ass, who aren't assholes. If you want to get a, a nice overview of all these legal things that happen, I do recommend the Midas Touch Legal AF podcast. 
Um, and they, they did not pay me, <laughs> to, to, but I listen to them pretty religiously because they are so good at just analyzing exactly what is happening in court right now with right. The, him. Yeah. Highly recommend it. Okay. That's cool. So, That's good to know. Okay. Yeah. So five minutes left, ladies. How do we want to end this? <laughs> I don't know. How did we want to end? How's it? We haven't talked about what we're watching on TV in a while. TV. Okay. Who wants to start, Elisa? Well, I'm watching The Crown. I loved it. <laughs> did you watch? Did you watch the whole thing? Yeah, I eat that stuff up. I binged I know, it. No, I, I would too. I'd spend the entire day, day if I could. So my question to you is. Am I right in being so, so disappointed in their casting of Prince Charles? He's too good looking. Dominic West has too much charisma. He's, he's too, too good looking. Sexy. And he's, he's too much of an, he, he's not the right kind of asshole, in my opinion. <laughs> he's not, but. He's, he's not, he's not, um, like, he's not weak enough. I forgive him. <laughs> I understand he's easy on the eyes, whatever. But he's, I, feel you, like, I feel like you really needed. I mean, even if you're going to have someone who's good looking, you need somebody who's able to be to appear weak. Because part yeah. of what made him an asshole was his weakness, I think. Unless, unless Peter Morgan wants him to be sympathetic. Right. Which, in which case, if which you is, ever watched, if you ever watched, um, but if you ever watched the movie. You know, with uh, with Helen Mirren as Elizabeth. Oh no, I never have. Okay, the Prince Charles character in that movie is very sympathetic. Yeah, he's uh, also just... he's also the guy that played King George in The Crown. So oh, oh okay. A lot of the same actors, you know. My 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 um considered opinion so far, and I am not done with the season. I'm like at episode eight or something still is that i feel like the third episode with um the fayed family you know the introduction to the fayeds and benny johnson was was just the most magnificent piece it's of storytelling so far it was uh, fantastic i agree maybe, and well not not in all of this all of the seasons but definitely this season that was just magnificent i don't know if you saw that yeah one you're making me want to go do it now i i was just oh you finishing, haven't seen any of them yet I, yeah I, no i well i just finished season four spoilers yeah. Okay. So what, what else? I don't want to take up all the time. Who else? Okay. What are you guys watching? I've got one and it's going to surprise you. Okay. On Paramount Plus, Tulsa King, which is done Ooh. by Taylor Sheridan. So the guy that does Yellowstone oh, starring Sylvester Stallone. No way. Oh, and, interesting. Uh, Dana Delaney is in it. It's Who's in it? Dana Delaney and Sylvester Stallone. Well, I knew Sylvester and, Stallone. And um, it's 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 a funny mob story. It's funny. Really? It's, okay. The Stallone character okay. has been in prison for twenty five years, and uh -huh. he's coming back out, and he's get he is exiled to Oklahoma, and he doesn't understand. You know, he's like freaking out at seeing you know um, dispensaries. You know, little <laughs> dispensaries. What else is Dana Delaney? And remind me, why do I feel like China I don't Beach. like her? China what Beach. No. What else? TV show. China Beach was the big one in the 80s mm. where she was a, a, a nurse during the Vietnam War. I feel like she was something in something else. That She's done other me. things, but that was the one I remember seeing her in. Anyway, Tulsa King is All right, I'll watch that. You know, if you like funny okay. mob stories, you know. Oh, all mob so stories. So I have I'm one, watching. too. <laughs> yeah, one here. I, so we watched Wednesday which is uh, oh, Tim Burton, I watch that too. Adam's down. Family on network and Netflix. And it was really good. I mean, we like John texted me and said, John Motto and, and said, you know what? Wednesday is really well written and it's funny. You should watch it. And he doesn't usually do that. I mean, he'll, he'll tell me something on the phone, but he doesn't usually like go out of his way to text me. Wow. So my kid, yeah, my kids were down and we we got this really big TV for Christmas. I bought a TV for me and my husband. It's like, we call it the big ass TV because it is. It's <laughs> 77 inches. 
The yes. older we get, the bigger our TV gets. Anyway. Well, that um, helps. It helps when you're looking at so, the captions because you can't hear. <laughs> it's so good. It's so well written. Yeah, exactly. It's so well written <laughs> and it's it's really just cast perfectly, perfectly. And it's 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 great. You'll love it. I, yeah, we, no, we were addicted. We, watch when the Nazis start getting me really down. Um, yeah. <laughs> we we finished it in two nights. Yeah. All oh, right. Wow. Perfect. Well, that's our show for this week. We've uh, we we went off tangents on tangents a lot, but uh, I hope it entertained you. Join us next me. week <laughs> at mamacrats.buzzsprout.com, our YouTube channel, or find us on your favorite podcast service such as iTunes, Google, and Amazon Music. And be sure to check our Facebook page for updates. I'm Donna Schwartz Mills with Carol Lee. And Elisa Worthington, and we're saying goodbye for the Mamacrats. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Mamacrats Mama Chat is part of the Demcast family of podcasts.